Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus will begin this morning on a historic event that happened on October 16th, 1995. Nearly two million African American men from across America gathered together at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. for the Million Man March. It was organized and hosted by Nation of Islam leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I say your name. Pledge that from this day forward, Coming up on October 10th of 2015, the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March will be celebrated in Washington, D.C. And here to tell us more about that is Minister William Muhammad representing Muhammad Mosque number three. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're coming up on this 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. In 1995, the focus was a day of atonement. And uh, coming up on 1010, the theme is justice or else. Tell us more about this year's gathering in the nation's capital. Well, as you stated, uh, 20 years ago, uh, Minister Farrakhan, uh, looking at the environment in the community, he thought and saw that the United States government was setting up the black male in particular for destruction. He saw movies like Boys in the Hood and Colors, and he saw these images of black men being portrayed as maniacal, as bestial, and as savage. So he did a tour of the country called Stop the Killing. Mm -hmm. He crisscrossed the country and he spoke to every major city and, uh, and town in America. He came right here to Milwaukee. Uh, and then he went back around the country speaking to men. And it is in that meeting that he called a Million Man March. And of course, the aim was not to petition government, but to call black men to D.C. to go before the God and repent for our negligence as fathers, as, as, as sons, mm -hmm. as brothers in the community. Uh, who have ne negated our responsibility of being constructive forces. And so it was before God, it was a spiritual call. So here we are 20 years uh, later, and you know we are reeling from crack cocaine, we're reeling from uh, the, uh, the black on black crime that we're experiencing. We're reeling from the uh, population explosion of, of black males in prison. Mm -hmm. Every 28 hours, a black male is killed by a police officer. Since Sandra Bland, five black women have died in police custody. And so the call this time is justice or else. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going back to Washington, D.C. We're calling our women. We're calling our Native American brothers and sisters who have a case for justice. We're calling our Latino brothers and sisters who have a case for justice. Uh, we're calling our veterans who have been treated unfairly, our women, and poor white people who have been denied justice in this country. So 10, 10, 15, justice or else, is much more inclusive of the human family whose souls 
cry for justice today. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, needless to say, the theme, justice or else, uh, will be deemed a little intimidating to some people who don't fully understand your purpose or your message. So, uh, if you can, explain what the or else means. Well, when you tell your children, you do your homework, you, know, you need to get these grades up or else. Mm -hmm. That's, that is a threat contained in there. Mm -hmm. So, or else is on two fronts. There is no messenger or prophet of God that came to a people to warn them and to guide them when they were off the path, where that message of guidance did not contain a threat. So the, ultimately, the or else is from God. So when Moses went to Pharaoh, he said, let my people go, or, or else. else. <laughs> I get that, I get it. The United States of America is like a modern Egypt. It's established on the murdering of the native people. It's established on the enslavement of black people. And so its foundation is that of injustice, tyranny, lying, and murder, where the where the undergirding philosophy is white supremacy, which is a falsehood. So God would have to come, if there is a God, to guide this nation, to give it an opportunity to correct itself. But if it doesn't, the or else is the same way that Rome went, the same way that Egypt went, the same way that Babylon went. That's the ultimate or else. Mm -hmm. But the first or else is we have something to do. And Minister Farrakhan is taking on the spirit and direction of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Before he died, the, the mountaintop speech the day before he died, he was calling on black people to withdraw their economic support of a tyrannical system. Mm -hmm. So he was asking black people to not buy Wonder Bread, not buy seal test products. Uh, take your money out of white banks, put them in black banks. Take your money out of insurance companies, put them in black insurance companies. And did you know, Andrea, that the speech that he was about to deliver before he died, he wanted the black community to boycott Christmas, mm. to withdraw our economic support of a system that was oppressing us. So he said, we're in pain, and when we're in pain, we should redistribute the pain. That's the or else that Minister Farrakhan is calling for. Well, thank you for explaining that, and Minister Farrakhan has said justice is the law that distinguishes between right and wrong, and he also says there really can be no peace without justice. Uh, there can be no justice without truth, and there can be no truth unless someone rises to tell the truth. So yes. uh, looking at statistics, back in 1995, there were 36.4 million people living below the poverty line. Today, those numbers are 45.3 million in the U.S. living in poverty. 60% of people in prison are black and Latino, and it has been established that Wisconsin prisons incarcerate the most black men in America. So uh, you will have people question the whole concept of why something like this is needed, but it's those numbers that continue to grow that call for some type of action. So uh, in your opinion, uh, is there a solution to these issues that we're facing today? Sure, um, we believe that the, the condition of our people in those numbers that are so troubling mm -hmm. are a result of the rejection of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's guidance in the 50s and 60s and 70s. He was telling our black leadership as Minister Farrakhan is telling our black leadership today, that we have to come together and come up with a solution where we pool our resources economically, intellectually, and that we chart out a course for our people and build something independently. So he asked us to pool our resources and do for self. We are rich 
collectively, but we, of course, we are poor individually. But if we work together with what we have, uh, we can buy land and we can, from the land, uh, we can build an economy. Mm -hmm. Because everything that a person needs and that a people need, it comes from the land. It was the rejection of that because our leadership was afraid that it was not the uh, accepted by, by white leadership and the elite, and they wanted to in integrate. And Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned that integration was a hypocritical trick to make our 400-year-old enemy all of a sudden believe that he was our friend. So because we took the course that we took as a people, now we are consumers and we are weak politically, socially, economically, and so it is as a result of that. But if we, as Minister Farrakhan is calling for, he has, has launched a program called the Economic Blueprint or Muhammad Economic Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And he's asking our people to give a nickel a day, 35 cents a week, very painless sacrifice so that we can go to the earth, so that we can buy land, so that we can produce the food that we eat, so that we can produce the clothes that we wear, so that we could produce the, uh, the houses that we live in. And from that, there's, uh, there's an economy that will produce jobs for us. We can produce jobs for ourselves. And from what we consume, uh, we may provide for our people everything that we need. So we don't have to be a nation of consumers. We don't have to be a nation of beggars. We don't have to be a nation of protesters sitting in. All we need is the power of our unity to do something for ourselves. Well, just like 20 years ago, individuals will be taking buses from all of America to the nation's capital on 10, 10, 15, and there will be buses leaving Milwaukee going to Washington, D.C. So before we run out of time, we yes. need you to tell everybody watching how they can get on the bus. Well, you can get on the bus by logging on to mosque3.org. That's mm -hmm. M-O-S-Q-U-E-3.org. Mm -hmm. There you can buy a bus seat. $105 right now, and you can reserve your hotel. Uh, you may also call us at 414-755-2006. The other thing is uh, to aid and assist in the financing of this march, this gathering. It's not a march, a gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, people can log on to justiceorelse.com and just make a small donation. We don't uh, expect for corporate America or anyone else to pay for something that we're doing. We want to pay for it ourselves and we're asking our people to pool our resources so that we can make a strong demand of justice or else together. Now looking back, uh, 1997 was the Million Women's March mm -hmm. and so I'm just wondering, are you already thinking ahead for uh, 2017 to bring the women together and kind of uh, celebrate that 20th anniversary as well? Well, the, we certainly will celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Million Women's March, but we didn't uh, orchestrate that. Mm -hmm. We did support it. And whatever they decide to do in the way of commemorating it, they have our 1,000% support. All righty. But we're inviting our women to come along with us as well for the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. There you have it. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out before we do actually run out of time, Milwaukee is considered the third city of Islam in the West. That's correct. Uh, the first two cities being Detroit and Chicago. So with that said, the Muhammad Mosque number three is right here in the city. Where is it located and what is it that the mosque uh, does for the community uh, at large? Uh, we're located at 4202 North Tetonia Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, it was established in 1931 uh, by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and its founder, Master Fada Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And so it has a very old and uh, very valuable history. Mm -hmm. um, we work in our community. We go out, uh, the FOI and, and the MGT, uh, and we invite our people 
to Islam. We invite our people to a resurrection. To uh, we try to inject the spirit of of truth, and we work with our people, other organizations. We have a campaign. Uh, one of my students, uh, assistants in the ministry, is Brother Gat Turner or Sean Muhammad, and he has orchestrated a program called Black Love Matters uh, because Black Lives Matter if we love one another. Mm -hmm. And he go out with, uh, with the Growth and Development Street Organization, the, the uh, uh, other organizations, and they just go door to door. And they're on the campaign of 20 weeks, 20 communities. Uh, we work with uh, Brother Andre Lee Ellis that you will have on the program. Uh, we, we got this. And so we coordinate with churches and different organizations to bring uh, hope to the community, to inject life into the community, and to help resolve the conflicts that are in our com community. Because how can we go to our government demanding justice uh, if we don't resolve the conflicts within our own community? It weakens our demand. So we have a war on two fronts. Okay, well I thank you for stopping by and giving all the information about this 20th anniversary that again is happening on 10, 10, 15. It has well, been a you. pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Minister William Muhammad leads the Muhammad Mosque number three here in Milwaukee. And for more information, you can log on to mosque3.org. Or for details on the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March, you can also go to justiceorelse.com. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll meet two young men who represent organizations that have joined forces to provide exposure, support, and mentorship to young black males right here in the city of Milwaukee. We'll find out more about the Black Male Collaborative right after this.